Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down at 742. Nasdaq's off 322. S&Ps are off 92. Let's go for the while, man. Mr. Teddy Cakes, that is, you do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy, folks, every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. It's forex-trading-unlock.com. Ride them, cowboy, Teddy. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? We got some really good uh, things to talk about when it comes to the uh, currency markets today. I like Boy, it, Teddy. Let's go. Let's do it. Well, man. do you want to start with Asia or you want to start with Europe? It's Wherever your choice. You want, you tell man. Me. I'm wide open here. Okay. Well, why don't we start with the yen? Um, the yen has obviously been in a bearish market with the dollar. Okay. Now, uh, it made a lower move low today. Okay, confirming that it's still bearish. Yeah. It's kind of looking like a nice little bounce. It's because of the dollar rally. I think it's getting a little bit of that this morning. Um, but I would be careful with that. Unless you get a rally above the 105.05 area, I don't think you're going to get an upside breakout in any means. And even if you do, it'll be a neutral, not necessarily bullish breakout. Um, I think that if we test that 104 level again, which we're not too far away from, that you're going to see that continuation of the downtrend. And I really think that the US dollar yen trade is going to maintain maintain a bearish posture for even through the election okay. okay and that's the that's the only currency i think that you can kind of count on right now as far as technically training and fundamentally without being so news driven okay yes now now in that same trading zone now we have the australian dollar and new zealand dollar now we've remember we talked about about a month and a half ago, how we had the initial divergence in currencies would help. It started to have them free flowing again, where they weren't just trending one way against the dollar or with the dollar, you know. So now we have this divergence that's kicked up the heels and whatever. We're coming into the elections. So now, where the yen, I think, is the stable one, the Aussie and the New Zealand dollar, two totally different steel, uh, things. Australian dollar, US dollar, it's a bear right now. OK, so unless you get a rally above that 7155 level, I don't think you're going to have every, even a neutral trade with that one. OK, because Australia is, is heading they were They were they have a lot of issues with the coronavirus. And then if we have shutdowns globally, especially, yeah. they're going to get hit hard. You know, and then it comes to the commodity things. Oil is now we got Libya that went back online this week. That's another million plus barrels a day of oil coming back into a market that they're looking for lower demand. OK, so this doesn't bode well for the Australian trillion dollar US dollar. So for those traders who are leaning on the Aussie currency, well, no matter what cross it is, I would not look for very much strength in that currency, at least for the next few weeks into the next couple months, you know, and especially if they take out that, what is it, the 70-20 level, um, I think you're going to see a free fall. Now, New Zealand dollar, not the same case. That's been in a bullish market, at least in the intermediate and short run right now, and it's choppy. And I think that's because of the election. And I think you're going to see more of the same with that. And today, be careful because it made a newer move high, but it's setting up to have a bearish engulfing line sell signal as of the close today. Okay. So like, if it was to close right now, the New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar, I wouldn't say that it's a bear, but it's probably set for a short-term correction. So now let's move over towards our side of the world. We have the U.S. dollar Canada, which has been a bear and all of a sudden had an upside breakout today. So now we know that trending markets are either higher move highs and higher move lows for a bull or the opposite for a bear. So now we've come off a lower move low and we've made a higher move high in the Canada. I think that because of the elections and um, just because the current dollar strength right now, since we've had this bounce since last week, that's what you're seeing there. So I'd be very cautious trying to be a seller and jump into that. You know, before I was a sell rally guy for the U.S. dollar Canada. Yeah. Right now I'm off the table for the next couple of weeks. So and uh, so there's divergence there. So I'd be very careful trying. To, like I would look to buy dips right now in that. Um, now let's go to Europe. Europe, we know, is, is definitely falling into the coronavirus thing. Um, and uh, as far as the shutdowns and who knows how that's going to go with the economy, we know it's kind of like deja vu from six months ago. Um, I would think that it's probably going to be more of the same going into the holidays. I mean, in Chicago, as of today, there's no longer any more in, in, indoor dining. I know. In Cook, even in Cook County, that. the whole county, even yeah. in the suburb, can't do it. So we're going full throttle back into lockdowns in Illinois, and it's even going to be more extreme measures than before. You know, so, I mean, while this happens across the United States, this is going to definitely impact oil, all these other things, and you know where that goes. Um, plus, the stock market, the S&Ps, they topped out on the 13th of October, and they've been pricing in a, a Biden win. I mean, you can tell by the sector rotations about what's going on now. 
oil stocks were getting hit with stable oil prices before we started to get this oil panic again. You know, um, all your defense stocks have been getting hammered for the past month, you know. So I think that right now with that Biden pricing in the election, now you add COVID on top of it, you have flight to quality starting to happen a little bit in the dollar. And it's starting to show against the, the European currencies especially, you know. So you had the, uh, the euro, the U.S. dollar, or the euro, U.S. dollar, and the pound dollar that were trending higher against the dollar for the past couple um, months. Okay. Now we have a sell signal that occurred in the euro, U.S. dollar last week, and now we have this nice little sell-off. Okay. Now the Swiss is not moving as much as those other two currencies are. So, but I would be very leery of trying to buy the Euro US dollar right now over going into the election. I think it's going to be very choppy. It's not necessarily that today's sell off is indicative of a turn in this currency. Okay. You know, because when we talk next week, hopefully we'll know who the next president or if it's going to be Trump again, whatever, and we don't have too much chaos. Who knows? You know, we're not even going to try and forecast that. Right. You know, so, but between now and then, you have these extremes that you're coming into, and I think that the volatility, even though it's going to be there, it's going to be very sideways and choppy. You know, like the algos, I think, are going to have a field day over the next week. Yeah. You know, because everyone's, the more the polls come in, people are going to be like, oh, Biden's winning, or they think Trump's going to win. You're going to see these people, they're going to start lining up their bets. And I think most of it's already in there. But if we have any surprises, you know, like, you know, right now with the coronavirus spiking and whatever, I think you're really going to push the extremes with the equity markets. I mean, I was in the S&Ps for years. You know that. And yeah. like it's I mean, I would sell that market every single day. It's a natural thing for an S&P guy. But right now, I'm very bearish the S&Ps right now, at least for the next week. You know, oh, yeah, I they, cannot those see, September you know, lows a game, man. <laughs> That's the bottom yeah. line. Yeah. Right. right. Exactly. And when you, when you think about the shutdowns, I mean, and I was looking at the metals like gold really isn't popping yet. But you look at the Treasury bonds. Remember how we were yeah. talking about how the short terms, they're locked at bid because there's nowhere they can go. They can't break. Not with one year's, two years and euro dollars can't go down in price when they know the Fed is staying locked for at least a year. They just won't break. But the 30 year was dipping. And then it, what was it uh, last Friday? It set a low and they had a buy signal there. It's got a piercing line buy signal. And remember, I I said for the past like since the summer I'm like I'm a buyer I'm the buyer of the bonds just wait for it to break a couple handles and then get long and wait for it to snap back you know yes. and it was pushing that extreme last week and then last week with that buy signal now coming into the election the 30 year is ramping itself back up you know and that's remember we were talking they last week how the spreads so were quick, getting Teddy, so wide right I mean they yeah. were they were below the that August low what two days you know, right. It hours. was it got down to 172 something. Yeah. And now it's up to right. 174 something. Right. And most people, m most of your viewers are probably not bond traders. They don't realize that a, a $2 move in the 30 year. That's a big move. monster. Yeah. Right. It's right. monstrous. Yes, right. absolutely. Right. So but that's my take on where I think things are going right now. It's going to be choppy. I would just be very cautious with the European currencies as far as getting overly bearish yet. And folks, you can reach Teddy every trading day at Forex dash trading dash unlock.com it's forex dash trading dash unlock.com teddy you have a great week safe week sad that you guys are locked down again bottom line <laughs> gotta stay safe though man and can't go out for it snowed yesterday so you can eat outside in the snow oh now. my god <laughs> have a great one tommy and i come right Take back care. folks. Thanks.